Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Are you fun? <laughs> Is it just not gnarly or what? <laughs> We're inside the city at the mall parking lot, praising the Lord. Yeah. I mean, come on. So, where to start? So, uh, I, I guess if I look back, I was probably at the age of three, four, learning how to sip out of my mother's beer at the river party in. Um, my parents were drug users and alcoholics, uh, domestic violence. I was probably at the age of six, the first time they took my mother into an uh, insa insane asylum. And uh, my grandparents got custody of me for a little bit. And then my father got custody of me for a little bit. And then I ran from that. And uh, my mom was out and I ran back to her because that's what I knew. A heathen is going to run back to what she knows how to do, and that's be a heathen. My dad was not quite the same, but he lacked the love of the Lord, so I didn't know love. I knew drugs and alcohol, and I knew how to party. So that's how I grew up. I was 11 years old, and I had become a, an alcoholic. And uh, I got to do my first uh, line of dope at the age of 12 on my birthday. So that was like a birthday present for me. And uh, so that kicked meth off. I was 16 when I got married to my drug dealer. And uh, man, when I look back, I think, golly. But no, I married my drug dealer, um, and I quit doing meth, but I stayed an alcoholic and a pot smoker. I drank um, whiskey throughout the day and smoked pot whenever I needed, whenever I wanted. It was always there at my, my leisure. Um, we were functioning addicts, so we knew how to meet society's preference. We knew how to keep our yard mowed and our bills paid. So uh, we were just like the rest of the world, you know, we fit in. But the truth was, I was just an addict. I was just lost. And I was about 27 years old when I realized I couldn't have children. And that broke everything inside of me because I really had a desire to do something right, you know, and to do something right unlike my mother and my father and uh so i couldn't have children and it sent me into a a vent a bench so i drank whiskey throughout the day and i ended up getting a divorce divorcing my husband and running from him and uh, from that moment on i started doing methamphetamines drugs alcohol Sometimes I called myself a pirate and I did all three. <laughs> if I was still standing, I was doing it right. I was being a good outlaw. <laughs> so about five years ago, to be exact of yesterday, which was my birthday, and uh, I got thrown in jail for being uh, an accomplice to a robbery. First time I ever got thrown in jail, so, and I got put on um, probation for four years. Sentence was 15 years. Thank God I had never been in trouble before because um, I would probably be sitting in the pen. Um, I got to Mission Messiah and I was real hard. I wouldn't listen to nothing. I didn't want to listen to nothing. I didn't want to be there, but I had the state of Texas threatening me to put me in prison if I didn't go to Mission Messiah. And uh, 
And so I came to Mission Messiah and I walked in with two pink slips. <laughs> And no one has ever done that, but Lena K did. I walked in dirty, and Mr. Jamie prayed, and he heard from the Lord, and he let me come into his facility, into the Lord's facility, let me correct, because it is definitely the Lord's. Amen. Um, it took me about six months before I started to listen, but I tested everything that came out of Mr. Jamie's mouth. I tested him in every way possible. I tested his love. I tested his patience. I tested the scripture that was coming out of him. I tested everything about Mission Messiah and everybody around me. And then the Lord got me. He got me on my knees. He got me running. <laughs> he got me running straight into his arms because I had desired from a young child I had desired something different. I wanted to live a life of purity. I wanted to live a life of a godly woman, of, of, a, of a good stature, and I just didn't know how to find it. And I didn't know anybody who had it either. But I had found a place that had it. Amen. The Lord led me straight to a place that had the Lord in it, had the love of the Lord in it, had the Word in it. He was washing me with his word. He was teaching me his word. He surrounded me by people who loved me. They loved on me and they loved the hell straight out of me. Man. And I did. I started grabbing on to everything I could hear. Everything I could journal, I journaled it. And I'd reflect and I'd sit back and I'd ask and I'd plead with the Lord. Please change me, Father. I do not want to be hard. I do not want to be ugly. I don't want to be this brute beast of a woman who doesn't know even know how to act like a woman. I want to be gentle. I want to be patient. I want to show women that there is a way of living that is precious to the Lord. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program for women and women with children. Those real-life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life-debilitating substances and events. Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. In the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know? First, where's Miss uh, Maribel? Well, God is good, huh? Amen. Um, I have quite a story to tell. Um, before I came to the Lord, uh, it was a pretty much uh, spiral. Um, the facade of Satan, you know, telling me that it was okay to sell drugs and, you know, at, at the point in time you're selling drugs and you think you can maintain and, and you believe all these lies and all those things that I said that I never was going to be, I became. I never said I would be a junkie. I never said I would have a needle in my arm. I said all these things and slowly but surely Satan stole everything from me. And um, with that, he took my children, he took my freedom, he took my sanity. Um, so I went from selling drugs to becoming a junkie and uh, pretty much being the chick that had the backpack and the crowbar ready to pull a lick. So um, if you're familiar with that, anybody, that's what I got to. And. Um, I ended up doing some burglary, a habitation, stealing cars, you know, thinking I was bad. Well, all those things do have consequences. <laughs> and um, I finally got locked up in Lubbock County. And um, thank God for all the ladies that serve the Lord and go into jails and speak the word of God because there was where I heard of Mission Messiah. And um, uh, I uh, ended up bonding out of jail, and I ended up coming to Mission Messiah. And I think the cool thing about that was that, you know, we all have been to VBSs. We all know the word. I was raised in the word. So I knew of God, but I didn't know God. I didn't know how to apply his word to my life and live it. So God knew what he was doing at that time. I was there for about two months, and um, I don't know if y'all are familiar, but there we have to memorize scripture daily. And, um, you know, blessed is the man that meditates upon his word day and night, for he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. And with that, um, I'll never forget, I still had pending charges and I had CPS in my life and I was already gonna lose the children. And um, I remember on April 26th of 2015, I got baptized. So with all those pending charges, I said, I'm saved, this is it. You know, like God's gonna save me and I'm not gonna, all my charges are gonna be dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. Well. We all know there's consequences. So I ended up going back to court. And um, I was brave. I said, I'm going to fight these charges knowing that I was guilty, right? Because I had Jesus, right? And um, I ended up going to court. And uh, they ended up throwing me the book. They ended up giving me 10 years of TDC sentence, OK? So um, I didn't come back to Mission Messiah that day. <laughs> and. Um, in jail, I'm so grateful that um, we were memorizing the Word of God because CPS went and visited me and told me to go ahead and relinquish my rights, that I was never, ever going to see my children again. So I might as well kiss them goodbye. Well, at that point in time, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, finally, my brethren, keep your mind on things that are true. Keep your mind on Keep your mind on things that are just. Keep your mind on things that are lovely. Keep your mind on things. And if any of these things have
have any virtue or any oh, praise, sister. meditate on these things. So I did that. And I took it for what it was worth. And no matter what they told me, I clinged on to my father. And I get up every day and pray and pray and pray. Catching chain, mind you, I was going to prison. So I got there and um, kept on praying for the Lord's wisdom, you know, and uh, I met a lady there that um, she had worked with a lawyer before, but she was in drug addiction. She taught me about the law library, and we went in, and uh, she taught me how to um, put in some motions, and um, so I had put in some motions for shock probation, right? So I didn't know if I was going to get it or not. By this point in time, I haven't seen my children in about 14 months. Don't know who's changing their underwears. Don't know who's taking care of them, to be honest with you. Don't know what school they go to. So you're going through all this, and all I had was Jesus, okay? That's all I had. So I remember, you know, on the cement floor, praying to God and crying out, you know, God, please, please do something. I'm fixing to lose it all. Well. This was about in October. In November, you know, how many of y'all hear of anybody getting out of prison? I think the only person that I heard getting out of prison was Tupac, maybe. <laughs> but this is where it became real for me, okay? Um, so I'm sitting in there, and the prison guards tell me to go ahead and roll it up. I just got bench warranted back to my county. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, like, what's really happening. So I get bench warranted back to my county, and at that point in time, the judge tells me that he was gonna grant me my motion for shock probation. So I was out of prison, and um, two weeks after that um, was my last and final CPS hearing, and they granted me my children back. <laughs> Lord split the Red Sea. For me, there is no turning back after that. You know, just when you know it was the hand of God. So I come here today to tell you that God is no respecter of persons and it does not matter what you've done or where you came from. He will use you. And I'm grateful to tell you that I have been five years clean, going on five years clean. I have my children with me. I graduated Mission Messiah. I now work as staff there. I'm the uh, director of the Children's Learning Center. So that's a little bit of my story, and um, that's just how good God is. Bless you all.
Mission Messiah is an 18-month program for women and women with children. Those real-life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life-debilitating substances and events. Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study, scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. In the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know? So I arrived Wednesday night, because we usually do shooting on Thursday. So I arrived, I arrived Wednesday night, and I come in the house, and Tammy is back in her bedroom, sitting on this magical carnival ride of a bed that she has bought. <laughs> it is. So I say to Dana, I said, Dana, you got to ride the carnival ride. She looks at me like, you have lost your you, you mind. You lost your mind. So I said, it's like riding on a cloud. Well, yeah, it, and it was. I like, it, it's one of those things where the, the feet comes up and the back comes up. It's got a massage thing and you can plug your phone in the side. And I'm like, no wonder you don't leave the bedroom. And I you never have why, to leave the bed. Why would I want to? The only thing it doesn't have is a refrigerator built in, but we can, we can work on that. We can work on that or a cooler, at least a cooler. <laughs>
<laughs> we could have a cooler. You we could have a cooler. It's amazing. Has it made your life easier? Well, here's the deal. You know, I've been suffering a little bit. Y'all don't know this, but I'll tell you this. I've been suffering a little bit with a with a knee issue. Yes, indeed. So, getting up into anything right now is an adventure. So, you first thing you have to do is you have to wrangle yourself. So, I, I sit on the bed and I go one, two, three. And I throw myself in and then I grab. Just to stay in there so Just, it doesn't buckle so out again. So, yeah. I get in the saddle. And then once mm -hmm. I'm in, then I get that remote. See, it's a remote controlled bed. <laughs> this is what I mean. It's a remote controlled bed. You can put like, um, what was that, anti-gravity where it just lifts and lowers and you're like, oh, this is just, I'm not remote. Dana, Dana thinks she's an astronaut in her anti <laughs> Here I'm going, okay, take off. It is, it's, it's really kind of incredible. Uh, so, it, and it's. Does, that kind of thing doesn't come cheap. We're not going to mention the price, but well, but it no wasn't too bad either. If you need if you need answers, let me know. But it helps my sweet friend <laughs> rest well at night, and for that I'm grateful. There you go. And you know, all of that said, we're just being silly, but you know, life is a series of adventures, right. whether they're in in our health, <laughs> they're in. You know, just getting in and out of your car, I know. going to work. We just want you to know we're alongside you. We want you to know that we pray for you. You're our audience and we love you.